Hi friends, I'm Scott Giles, a consulting hypnotist and a life coach. And every Saturday afternoon at 2.30 Central Time, I do a short five or 10 minute video on some aspect of the hypnotic arts and sciences or life coaching. Today, I wanna to talk about psychological testing. Now, there are many sorts of psychological tests that are given by licensed psychologists, school psychologists, counselors, even social workers. Where are, there are intelligence tests, there are emotional intelligence tests, there are personality tests, there are aptitude tests, what kind of things you'd likely be good at. There are achievement tests, how much do you know? There are aptitude tests, what does your body lend you to be able to do? And there are neuropsychological tests, uh, do you have dementia? Do you have uh, some sort of a neurological problem or so on? Now, I go way back with testing. I'm, again, I'm not a psychologist. I'm a board certified diplomat of the National Guild of Hypnotists, a retired board certified chaplain, uh, a lifetime member of the Association of Professional Chaplains. But as part of my training, I took an actual advanced practicum in psychological tests and measurements. So I understand completely how to administer the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory, the 16 Personality Preference Tests, the McMillan Multi-Axial Summary, and so on and so on and so on. I've studied them, although I don't actually use them in my practice. What I did use in my practice for many years was the MBTI, the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, which is based upon Jungian psychology and is a way of understanding different personality types. I've also extensively used the Enneagram, an older system of personality classification, uh, and I was in fact a mem professional level member of the International Enneagram Association. So I know about this stuff. Um, I don't use them anymore. And this video, I guess, is about why, why I became very uncomfortable with them. If you go to a psychologist or a counselor very often, you'll be presented with one of these because they are trained to kind of use them as a cookbook to discover what the problems are and where the therapy should go. And sometimes the insurance companies will mandate that the tests be given and only such treatment as tracks the test results can be offered. Uh, this is a real problem. Now, I should mention that in addition to the uh, official psychological tests and measurements, there are some non-official ones like astrology, uh, numerology, based upon various numerological calculations made of your name or birth date. In fact, it's kind of interesting. There have actually been some comparisons where uh, people were given the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory, a well-researched uh, psychological instrument, and their horoscope, and on the whole, most people thought their horoscope was more accurate. Uh, in fact, British astrologer Robert uh, of Kooning has demonstrated that there is, in fact, a direct statistical correlation between the personality dimensions measured by a major psychological test, the ESNIC Personality Inventory, and the descriptions that astrologers typically used to describe personality favor of factors. Uh, one of the reasons for this is something that has come to be called the Barnum effect. And by Barnum, they mean P.T. Barnum, the great circus owner, um, who comes from actually one of my hometowns in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And the, uh, the church I first joined was, in fact, built on land given by P.T. Barnum. Um, the Barnum effect, which was first described in 1956 by psychologist Paul Meaton, uh, he used it to explain the pseudo-psychological or the pseudo-successful psychology tests that were given by P.T. Barnum uh, to people who were on his midway or consulting his fortune tellers or the, uh, the mentalist who would tell you your future. And uh, part of this sideshow con was Barnum discovered that uh, people tend to give very high accuracy ratings to descriptions of personality traits that are actually supposedly tailored to them, but are actually vague enough to apply to a whole range of people. 
because the language used is vague. People interpret their own meaning into that language in light of their self-opinion. Uh, these days you can see a lot of this going on on Facebook. Uh, you know, uh, what Star Trek character are you closest to? Or, you know, if you were a flower, what flower would you be? And there are these pseudo-psychological tests that return some sort of a score. Uh, the problem is that the Barnum effect is real. If the descriptions are fairly vague, and even in the legitimate psychological testing, the descriptions are kind of vague. People will tend to read their own meanings into them and feel that they're more accurate than others. Now, I mean, the Myers-Briggs is something I have a lot of respect for. Uh, it's used to describe personality traits and behavioral characteristics. In that, I am what's called an INTJ, an introverted, intuitive, thinking, and judging type. And that does, to some degree, accurately predict a lot of my personality preferences. Uh, on the Enneagram, I am an eight with a nine wing, which means I'm a fairly rebellious person and uh, uh, a, very much an alpha male. Yeah, that's true. But is that all I am? Am I not capable of acting in opposition to some of these innate traits if I see a reason to? Of course I can. Of course I can. And there's the danger. In neurolinguistic programming, there's a principle the map is not the territory. Simply because you have an accurate description of something doesn't mean you understand it from an experiential basis. And that's why I stop using all of the psychological tests. I uh, do dream interpretation, I do drawing interpretation, but these are not psychometric uh, inventories in the way that the Minnesota Multiphasic or the MBTI is. Uh, People will agree that the test is accurate, but that's the Barnum effect more often than not. And they tend to make a mistake and think that the map is the territory. And they begin to restrict their behavior to match the categories of their supposed psychological type. A really great article appeared this morning in the Smarter Living section of the New York Times to promote inclusivity Stay Away from Personality Assessments by Quinesha Jackson Wright. And it's a great article. If you have a New York Times subscription, I suggest you seek it out. What she mentions is that she was in a company where they did Myers-Briggs type indicator testing on all the employees. And she was a fairly uncommon type. In fact, the same type I am, INTJ. And all of the other employees in the company were of a different sort extroverted, sensei, and so on. And what happened, because people shared their results, she found herself ostracized from her co-workers, denied employment opportunities. Well, you're an introvert. You like working alone. For a sales position, we need a strong extrovert. Well, that's not true. Extroverts and introverts can both be highly effective sales professionals, they just do it differently. But if you don't realize that the map is not the territory, you begin to restrict your opinion of other people to match their measured characteristics, and people themselves, because of the Barnum effect, will start to limit themselves and live in accordance with the categories and not develop other facets of their personality that they would genuinely benefit from developing. Now, I think the only exception here I would have to my general concern about psychological testing are the ones that are testing for physical traits, the neuropsychological tests, memory, hand-eye coordination. You're measuring something physical. But if you're measuring personality, aptitude, you're measuring opinion. And it may give you some information about the person, but it doesn't give you the whole picture and it may lead you to misunderstand the person, and it may lead the person to misunderstand themselves. I've seen that happen. So I've dispensed with these within the context of my practice. Hey, thank you very much for your time and attention. I'll be back next Saturday at 2.30 Central with another video. I'm gonna be talking about the art of nurturing grudges. 
So if you've got some grudges to nurture, uh, tune in and maybe we can have something, uh, I can say something that will be helpful for you. Uh, as always, if there's something I can do to make uh, you become a better version of yourself using the hypnotic arts and sciences or uh, my life coaching skills, uh, I'd be delighted. When I edit this video, the next card I'll put up will be the link to my website. Check it out. Lots of stuff there is free and just take a look at it and decide if it might be something useful to you. And if so, reach out. Take care, have a great day, and we'll talk to you next week.